Welcome back to the channel. I've got another video for you in our Python for Chemists data series where we've been going over a number of ways that we can use Python to tackle common chemistry tasks. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Lipinski's Rule of Five, which is a set of criteria that was developed to predict the likelihood that a chemical compound will have properties that make it suitable for oral active drug use in humans. And so there are a few suggestions. These are molecular weight is not greater than 500 Daltons, the number of hydrogen donors is not greater than five, the number of hydrogen acceptors, hydrogen bond acceptors is not greater than 10, and the log of the octanol water partition coefficient, log P, is not greater than five. And so these are all the sorts of properties that we have demonstrated in one video or another that we can extract from the PubChem database. And so I wanna demonstrate that, how we can actually build a function to determine if a compound is drug-like based on this criteria. Uh, using many of the principles that we've discussed in the previous videos. Here is the full playlist shown here on the left. There is a playlist now on YouTube where if you want to watch through, because in this video, I'm just going to show you the function that I've already built. Um, however, if you were to follow this, most of these methods will look quite familiar to you. So in this cell, I have two functions. The first is called check Lipinski. I will pass in some drug candidate by name, say aspirin, acetaminophen, etc. And we will try to fetch that information from PubChem. To do that, we will use our pcp.getCompounds method. We will take our drug candidate, return the name, and ensure that we get our compound data type back. From there, we can take advantage of the multiple attributes that this compound data type has, such as molecular weight, hydrogen bond acceptor, donor count, and the log P. And I've got a little bit of control language around here just in case we pass in a compound that doesn't exist in the database or if there's missing information from this database, it will not necessarily break this function. The second function here is just plotting those results. I want to plot them in a visual way such that if we're quickly screening compounds, we don't need to read each of these criteria. We could just quickly visually assess if they're passing our Lipinski criteria. And so I'm using this linear segment color map and generating a color map of red and green so that if it meets our criteria, it will appear as green. If it fails a criteria, it appears as false. And then we'll use a heat map to actually render the output from our Lipinski function. So if you look at the first candidate, we are looking at ibuprofen. We will pass ibuprofen into our check Lipinski function. We will return these four outputs here, molecular weight, the hydrogen bond acceptor and donor count, and the log P. And you can see here, this is where we are returning those four values. And so we will unpack them, store those values as vowels. The keys will be illustrated below. I could have made this a dictionary in the method, but still want to break some of this out just so it's easier for you to see. We'll store that as a results data series where we are now zipping our keys and values together, converting it to a frame and then transposing, and they will plot those results. And so when we look at ibuprofen, we see that it meets all the criteria. We have a molecular weight below 100. We meet the hydrogen bond donor and acceptor counts and the log P. And if you look at the second drug, let's run this. And we see that it actually fails the criteria. The molecular weight is probably too big and the log P does not match. If you look at this drug, let's take a quick search. So if you look this drug up, we see that it's actually entering a phase two clinical trial for the treatment of neuroendocrine carcinomas. And so although not all drug candidates will meet Lipinski's rule, it is a good way to test if a compound is drug-like although this is not a hard and fast rule, and just another way to show how we can use Python to test these molecules. And so over the course of this series, we've covered a lot of tasks that I think you will find very helpful. So this video will conclude a lot of the work that we were developing for the Python for Chemistry data series, and I will now be switching more into the Python for Forensic Chemistry series. There's quite a bit of overlap between this series and other videos, that I will bring into the forensic chemistry series, but I'll focus a lot more on narcotics, determining what type of drug we have, how much is present, and a lot of the trade-offs when it comes to making measurements in the lab versus in situ or on a crime scene. In any case, I'll see you in the next video. If you want to be notified when that series drops, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.